What's going on, Shrewd Stock Squad? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, do yourselves a favor, hit that subscribe button, come join the Discord, link in the Patreon below. We're building wealth out here. None of this is going to be fin financial advice. Now let's get into this. All right, guys. Like I show you every single time. Portfolio, open, transparent. We're up 1% today. On average, let's take a look. So... You know, I made a couple of different plays here and I told everyone, but look, I'm showing you the every single time I show you this whole thing all the way from one day, one week, one month, three month, one year, all time starting to make a little bit of a recovery here. We can see, but we got a long way to go. All right. And that's why that's why I'm here for. I take you through it step by step every move that we do. OK, so let's get into this. All right. What ended up happening for me today was. Really, Sidious got a little bit of a run up this morning. Sidious Pharma was the one that was uh, really taken off in the morning and people were really bullish on this thing. Even I was. I was kind of excited. And I was like looking at the news, what happened. Apparently, the CEO of Sidious gave a, he gave a interview with Benzinga. And in that interview, he really didn't say anything. <laughs> Um, I, I don't want to say he didn't say anything, but he didn't say anything new that we didn't already know. But re remember what I tell you guys about these biopharma plays, especially these penny ones. When there's no news, that is kind of bad news for us as investors, all right? Because no news means nothing's going on, means there's no reason for the stock price to rise, okay? When there is any news, especially if it's, let's say, I'm not saying any news if it's bad, but if there's like neutral news that comes out, like uh, the CEO decided to give an interview here and he just talked about his, the company and how he got there, the CEO, his whole uh, story. Well, hey, he still gave an interview. So that's a good, that's a good headline to give. And especially considering they're going to be having their phase three uh, results getting reviewed by the DMC for FDA approval later on. And the thing is, so that result, so here's the thing I was like looking into. The results are going to be coming out on the, at the end of this month, you know, probably May 1st is when they go out, uh, for review. But by the time they actually review it, it doesn't have to be May 1st. You follow what I'm saying? The DMC does not need to review it the same day they come out. And even if they decide to day one, May 1st, they're going to review it. It takes a while to review all the data for them, the patient information and what the success rates were, you know, any adverse effects and a whole bunch of stuff that they look into. So the actual information from the DMC, if they're going to try to push this thing for an early FDA approval, that's not going to come on May 1st, guys. That's going to come a little bit after um, once they finish the review. But the thing here is in May, we're going to be seeing a little bit of a push up if the results go well. If they don't, if they don't go well and, you know, something went wrong and things like that, we're going to see a pullback on the stock. And what's, remember though, that just means it's not going to get the early approval. That does not mean it's not going to get approved. <laughs> that just means instead of having just 65% of the patients completed in their trial, then they might have to go through 100% of the patients, which is what most companies end up having to do. So uh, it's, in my opinion, not a big deal, but just want to put that out there for you guys. Okay, so all the other plays, look, shout out if you got in on ADVM, like we talked about. I said that, I think, two days ago in the video. Uh, this one, we still have the run-up that we're expecting for. This one, we're holding on for um, another week or two. Uh, that's still going to go. CYCN, I mentioned in yesterday's video and in the Discord before. Uh, v E R U S E A C. Same thing, guys. I put you guys in on these plays, and um, I do this thing just so we can make qu quick bucks. All right, these are not stocks we fall in love with. I say this in every video. All right, we don't love these stocks. Okay, we use them for what we need, and then we put them back to the side. Okay, we rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, and that's how we keep generating this wealth. Okay, that's how we're going to be churning this whole engine, at least in my portfolio. Okay, this is my portfolio. I'm doing a risky portfolio. Do not mimic the moves that I do to the T, okay? I am, this is a portfolio I'm trying to 10X, okay? Understand, I started with around 90 grand and I'm trying to make this thing a million in like two years time frame. That's extremely risky. I don't care who you're, what investor you're talking to. That's a very risky way to go about investing and that's not what I preach. Please look at my beginner investment video. I say this in almost every video of mine. Please look at my beginner investment video if you're beginning or if you're even if you're just uh, new to the markets. And when I say new, I'm talking you've you've only been in it like a year or so. Uh, if you've only been in the markets for a year, um, I still consider that beginner status. 
and you kind of have to understand how to structure a portfolio and how to structure wealth. Okay. I always, I always preach having a foundation layer, having a middle layer and having a little frosting layer on top. You know, think of your portfolio like a cake and that's how you do it. So this Robin Hood thing of mine is not my entire wealth. I have to emphasize this, you know, in every video because people keep getting uh, confused on that. And I don't want, I don't want everyone, uh, I don't want people mimicking all the moves I do on this. All right. So check out that video if you have not already. Uh, Disney and Apple. Apple has started having its little bit of a run up now. You know, we've been looking at it. It's uh, finally back up to the 134s. And, you know, who knows where it's going to go next. We do have that catalyst at the end of the month. I think they have their uh, earnings coming out. Uh, yeah, April 28th. This is going to happen uh, next week. So we got another news thing uh, that can go in for this one. Remember, though, last time Apple gave their earnings, even though they killed it on the earnings, the stock still tanked. So we can't always predict it, but I'm I'm kind of bullish on Apple right now, so I'm okay with sticking that one through. Disney guys, same story. Parks reopening um, in California, I think, at the end of the month. And they got movies coming out. They got Disney+. Plus. They got a whole bunch of things that are in the works for it. Uh, I'm not going to go into it <laughs> in this video. But I already told you what I'm doing with Apple and Disney, right? Um, okay, all of those things I showed you. Now, let me show you the play which I got our Discord family on earlier today and i just bought in on this one today i actually went a little heavy on this stock and i'll tell you why what happened so adct all right that's a ticker symbol okay if you want to get in on these plays early with the rest of us on the on the discord there's a link in the patreon and you can sign up for it if you want if not i still show the plays like this every single day i keep it open and transparent i get it if you can't afford it that's all fine i'm still going to be rocking with you guys and i show you right here on uh, youtube for free like that okay but what happened today was this this is big news so adct this is a company that's making I forgot the drug name off the top of my head, but what they're doing is they are, they were making a drug for B cell lymphoma. So if you've heard of like, uh, you know, like blood cancers and stuff like that. So you have leukemias and lymphomas you might have heard of. They're making a drug for, uh, it's called diffuse large B cell lymphoma. That's the most common cause of uh, lymphoma in America. Actually, maybe in the world too. But um, in America, it's the, it's the leading uh, lymphoma that's out there. And the big issue that happens with cancer is this, all right? Here's the thing. We can resolve a lot of cancers. Uh, you know, we have chemo, radiation, things like that. But the big issue that always happens is this. They relapse. They relapse. And then they end up getting cancer again the second time. And the second time around is much worse than the first time around. And this drug that they were, that they've been working on for a long time, right? If finally, if they were expecting the FDA to have its approval date all the way in May. I think it was like May 21st was the initial approval date. What happened though is this. This is why I, I, I was so excited when I saw this news. They got an early approval when they weren't granted it, but FDA still, still granted it. And they did this today and today's what, April 23rd? They gave early access approval to this drug that, uh, that this company was having for, um, that they were looking to get the approval for from the FDA. Guys, let me tell you something. FDA, government in general, these are slow. But the government is, if you've ever been to the DMV, you know firsthand, it's one of the slowest places you could ever be. So for the FDA to go ahead and say, hey, I'm going to take you guys and give you an early approval, there's a reason why. This drug that they gave, okay, this drug that they gave had a 24.1% uh, cure, cure, okay, cure rate for B cell lymphoma like that. And the thing here is this, is this. 24%, yeah, that's not the biggest number, things like that. But look what I'm saying, cure, meaning it doesn't happen again. That's huge in cancer, okay? When you talk cancer, to say cure, there's only a handful of drugs. There's only a handful of cancers that have drugs which can truly cure them. Um, and right now, to have something for the, the leading uh, cause of lymphoma in America, this is huge news. Analysts have given this thing a rating of around like 40 something dollars. I forgot the top of my head, but it's in the things like 45, 48 dollars. And, um, it's, you see what happened here? It's been going down ever since, uh, they, they first launched over here just in, um, 
like over the last summer. So May, June, and look, it's been going down, down, down. So typically with these uh, biopharma stocks, okay, there's two different types. You typically have buy the rumor, sell the news, right? That, that's what we're used to, okay? Meaning, meaning what should have happened then? If, they, if people were buying the rumor, okay, if people were trying to buy the rumor, this stock should have been going up, guys. This stock should have been going up this last few, uh, last few months and whatever. It has not been going up though. Okay, it has not been going up. So that means when this stock first came out, when when they got this approval notice, right? There, nobody sold the news. So that's what we were initially. That's what, I, at least in my head, when I saw this. So I bought. This was around, I think, like two o'clock or something like that when I bought in on this stock. And then I noticed, I'm like, man, why is this thing tanking? Why is it tanking? And I was in my head, I'm like, man, do I? I don't know. Maybe this is getting shorted. Who the heck knows what's going on? Um, but I realized they they can't this is not the situation like that you're not going to buy the rumor and sell the news if they haven't had the run of there's nothing to sell <laughs> you follow what i'm saying so what happened is in my opinion what happened is that there was a there's a lot of data where they weren't able to publish yet when this news initially came out it was only in a few places that you could find this uh info uh that this drug got approved and when i when i first saw that and ADCT was not able to make a PR release yet. They didn't put that information out. What happened though was after hours today, they decided to put um, an investor call out. They they, were, they did an investor call in that in that afternoon meeting, and this is what I heard in that meeting. It was it was a good call and everything like that. Key takeaways though, what they're going to be doing, guys, is just next week. So today's April twenty third. This is the Friday. Starting next week, they already have a team of people lined up for sales. They have, I think it was, they're going to be charging $100,000 per treatment, okay, per patient. And I think their total amount of patients are over like 11,000 right now, just right now, okay? And they haven't even started, I think this is before the drug is even approved. <laughs> and starting next week, this is going out. This company is very solid. Their financials are, are good. And quite honestly, this is this is a play which I'm looking to buy the room. Well, I don't want to say buy the room or sell the news, but I'm looking to get in on this one around this price. So you can see where I got in. $23.74. That's my price that I bought in on. And I went, uh, I doubled down a lot on this one. I put eight grand in it. So what I did was I sold some out from Disney, sold some out from Apple, transferred it in here. I'm going to get that run up and then I'm going to cash out. I'll let you guys know, you know, I always post the results out here whenever, uh, whatever plays I'm doing and what I'm thinking. So I, you know me, I always keep it open with you guys, family. Um, but that's kind of how we're going to play it. We're going to see how this thing does next week. And then we're going to take it from there, all right? So I just want to give you this heads up. Um, and honestly, if any of you guys have uh, you know any family members with uh, lymphoma or anything like that, this is good news because I say diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, but um, I think this drug is actually able to be used for um, other other types of lymphomas as well. So this is actually really good news uh, just you know, for, for humanity in general. <laughs> so we, that's why we got to see in the, in right at towards the end of after hours, this thing started running up. I'm expecting Monday this thing to, to peak again and who not, we'll, we'll gauge it, you know, where it goes step by step. But I, you know, I keep everybody informed like this. Uh, obviously I can only make a video, you know, later in the days, uh, cause you know, I've been busy during the whole day. You know, I have a lot of my stuff going on, but I always keep it posted up in the discord right in the moment cause it's easy to send a text out so join there if you can if not don't worry other thing i ended up buying in was dogecoin <laughs> i just did a hundred dollars in there and because i'm really trying to use my technical analysis to get in on dogecoin and because cryptos have been pretty decent at following uh technical analyses because there's not as much fundamentals <laughs> for some of them at least and uh, you know honestly it's been pretty good so far i mean you, if you take a look at this i only put a hundred dollars in and i'm up three point four four or five percent um that's three and a half percent in a day is pretty solid so uh yeah i'm just this is just me testing out uh, how my indicators and all of that stuff is working out so far but yeah guys i don't have too much other news you know it's been a green day for most people neo finally broke out from uh the forty dollars mark, which it's been held underneath for such a long time, and if you've been in uh, this, this was a good week for for people for people who are holding Neo, holding Palantir. Uh, you know, a lot of the stocks that we've been talking about for a while, they started to get a little bit of a run up. Now, I always say it's nice to see two green days back to back, but this is not enough for us to say 
we're you know we're in a bull run we're we're out of the correction this is not enough for us to say that okay i want us to think back okay we can't we can't be emotional i keep telling you guys think of the market as a relationship with a bipolar person okay think of the market i'm going to say this again Think of the market as a relationship with a bipolar person. There's going to be good days and bad days with them. They overreact and then, then and, and like, you know, you can't predict some of it. If they get a little bit of good news, they'll go super excited. If they get a little bit of bad news, they'll get really depressed. And just because we see two days of stability, that's not enough for us to say, this is great. We're done with, uh, you know, we're out of the waters yet. We got to see a little bit better consistency. All right, guys. So. Anyways, I mean, that's everything I, I have to share with you guys. You know, I share all this information. I do all this open and transparent just to give you guys a breath of fresh air. Because I know on YouTube right now, it's, it's been, um, it's hard to find this sort of stuff. So I want to set you guys up on the right path for wealth. And I want to build, I want to build this family together. All right. I want to build this family together. And that's how we, ro- that's how we rock and roll over here. Step by step, we go, we go in this as one family. All right. With all that said, enjoy your Friday nights, guys. As always, stay happy, stay healthy, let's get wealthy, take care.